So now that we've learned about Lewis dots, I want you guys to start thinking about what these molecules actually look like in three-dimensional space. So we know that molecules have to be 3D because we live in a 3D world. And so in order to represent the way they actually look in three-dimensional space, we use the Vesper theory. So V-S-E-P-R, Vesper, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory is what Vesper stands for. Um, so we're going to actually look at some of the different electric geometries and the molecular geometries. So electric geometries, I'm going to tell you right now, will always be the same. So if I just look through here, I see that if I have three bonds being made, I always have trigonal planar. If I have four bonds total being made, I always have tetrahedral. Okay, if I have two bonds being made, I'll always have linear. And so we look at what we call the central atom to figure out how many bonds are being made. So with this very first example, I have my central atom that's connecting to two other atoms, which means that I have an, a linear electric geometry. And then my molecular geometry is also linear. Electro, or sorry, molecular geometry is going to depend on this. Okay, so my electric geometry my electric geometry will depend on this idea of what is a bonding pair and what is a lone pair. By lone electrons, I mean just electrons on the central atom. Okay, so I'm looking at electrons on my central atom for the lone pair. So let's look at some examples. So trigonal planar, if I look at three bonds being made and zero lone pairs, my trigonal planar should look something like this. Okay, so I've got my central atom it is making three bonds and I don't have any lone pairs, so my molecular geometry would also be the same. For my electric geometry, I'm going to draw the same thing for trigonal planar, despite the fact that I now have a lone pair of electrons. So I would draw the exact same little structure where my central atom is making three bonds. However, for my molecular geometry, this is going to change. So now I have my central atom making two bonds. with a lone pair of electrons. So this signals to me this is a lone pair of electrons. Okay? That's a lone pair of electrons. So I've got two bonds, one lone pair on my central atom, and this has the molecular geometry of a bent structure. Let's look at tetrahedral now. So tetrahedral should look something like this. Here's my central atom and it's making four connections. I draw it like this because this is the farthest apart that these um, different atoms can be with each other. So valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, or VSEPR, shows you that molecules will form um, geometries that allow the electrons to be as far apart from each other as possible, right? Because we know that electrons repel each other, and so the molecules are going to be as far apart as possible. So I know my electric geometries are all going to be the same, so I'll just go ahead and draw all of those for tetrahedral in the same fashion. I need four bonds. So those are all of my tetrahedral. Now, for my very first one, I've got 4O, so my molecular geometry, I'm going to draw the exact same thing. But now my molecular geometry is a little bit different because I've got a lone pair. So I draw the lone pair on my central atom, and this is my new tetrahedral. So this is trigonal pyramidal. Okay. And finally, I have a bent structure. So bent structure... I have two bonds being made with my central atom. 
and then I have two electrons, two lone pairs on my central atom. Okay? So notice what I did here. I just started off with four pairs and I just kind of replaced them. So it's kind of like bingo almost where you like replace the B, you get rid of the B. So I like got rid of that first bond and replaced it with two um, with a pair of electrons. And then I replaced the second bond down here with a pair of electrons. And this is a bent structure. So some things that I want you to take away from this, electric geometry is always the same um, depending on the number of bonds that it's going to make. So the total bonds affects the electric geometry. And I just realized I made a mistake down here. The number of bonds versus the number of lone pairs will affect the molecular. So these are VSEPR models. I will expect you to be able to recognize some of the more um, useful ones, especially tetrahedral, because we deal with a lot of those. Um, and we'll look at the way that these actually look um, in a molecule on Monday. Next up, we want to determine polarity. So polarity means polar or nonpolar. And we typically represent if something, the pole of something with this kind of arrow. So I know it's polar if unequal electron sharing. And then it's nonpolar if I have equal electron sharing. So I'm going to kind of model this with Lewis dot structures. So the very first one I have N2, I'm going to go through this step-by-step -step process again. So here are my four steps for making the correct Lewis dot structure. I'm going to start with N2. I know that nitrogen has five electrons and there are two nitrogens, which means I have a total of ten electrons to place. I start off by single bonding everything, so I've got nitrogen and nitrogen. Next, I'm going to go through and fill up one atom at a time. So I've got N, two electrons there, four, six, eight, and ten. I'm out of electrons now, and I notice that this nitrogen has eight, and this nitrogen has four. So I'm going to share, I'm going to go to my fourth step, which is to start double or triple bonding it. So I started off with that single bond these electrons are going to become a double bond, but then I notice that my nitrogen is still not full over here. It only has six. So these electrons also have to form another bond. So I have a triple bonded nitrogen. This is a nonpolar molecule. So this nitrogen is going to draw electrons out. This nitrogen is going to draw electrons out and those poles balance each other. So they're pulling in opposite directions, but it's an equal opposite direction. Let's look at HCl. So I know hydrogen has one, Cl has one, or Cl has seven, sorry. So I have a total of eight electrons to place. I start by single bonding it. Then I go through and I say HCl, my hydrogen is full, so I fill up my chlorine. Now something that I'm going to notice is that my chlorine is much more electronegative than my hydrogen. So it is pulling electrons towards it and this is a polar molecule. So the chlorine, because it's more electronegative, is able to pull those electrons closer to it. So this is going to be a polar molecule. And we'll do CH4 really quickly. C is 4, H, I have 1 times 4, so I have 8 electrons to place total. I start off by single bonding it. And then I'm all done with my electrons and everything. I want to see if it's polar or not. So the carbon is a little bit more um, electronegative. So these electrons are going to go towards the carbon, but they're being pushed back by each other. These electrons go through the carbon, but again, I see that those arrows are meeting up. So if my arrows are meeting up, this would be a nonpolar molecule. So what I did, just as a recap, I used the, the electronegativity, and I said from left to right, it is increasing, which means my elements on the right are going to be more electronegative. 
I looked at my two nitrogens. They're both pulling them out, but they're doing so in opposite directions, so this is a nonpolar molecule. Hydrogen is to the left of chlorine, so chlorine is more electronegative. My arrow pulls it out, and there's no balance. Over here, I have a balance going on. So carbon is more electronegative, but it's pulling those electrons in, and the arrows are meeting up with each other, so they're going back out. Okay, so nonpolar, polar, and nonpolar. We're going to practice a lot with this. I know it's a long video, and I'm sorry, guys, um, but a lot of information that I needed you guys to get.